Good evening and welcome to another edition of WOLW Sports Video. My name is Matthew Morgan. I'll be on the mic with you tonight as we cover the Fort Payne vs. Section Live varsity baseball game here in the 2017 Wildcat Classic here at Fort Payne High School. Starting off on the mound for the Fort Payne Wildcats will be number 7, Michael Gulledge. Uh, quickly around him, uh, catching will be number 2, J. Tyler Ellis. On first will be number th uh, 22, J.C. Broke. Second baseman will be Joshua Bain. Third baseman will be Jordan Bain. Shortstop will be uh, Trey Bailey. Left field will be uh, Robbie Graham. Center fielder will be Levy Hall. And then right field will be Will Anderson. As leaning off for the section lines will be number 60, Trevor Gentry. And and the section the line, the center fielder, number white 60, Trevor jersey Gentry. and pants. Fort Payne in their gold tops and white pants. As first pitch on the way, high, ball one. Second pitch on the way, and check swing, but it will be uh, just paint the corner of the plate for strike one. Like Gentry was just trying to defend the corner of the plate and just couldn't quite get to it. Gullish had him frozen there. It's one one count. This one on the outside. Ball two. And this one's going to be lined down the first base line. Just foul. But that will be strike two now for Trevor Gentry as the count even out at two and two. Michael Gullish will step off the mound, get a quick hand of dirt. And here's the delivery. This one's going to be lined down the right field line, and it's going to stay fair this time as Anderson will collect it, fire into the cutoff man, and that's going to be a leadoff hit for the section lines, Trent for Gentry, on first base. Come up next in the second spot. It's going to be number 30, Trevor Porter. Third baseman, number 30, Trevor Porter. That's first pitch swinging. This will be popped up over the backstop for strike one. So Gullage ahead in the count early on. Checks the runner at first. Second pitch and runner's going to be gone and throw down is just in time. Great throw by Jay Tyler Ellis as uh, Gentry looked like he might have had it. He might have slid a little short, but J. Tyler Ellis guns him down for the first out. And that will leave Trevor Porter at the plate still, facing a 1-1 count. As it looked like Gullich might have, uh, or Ellis might have caught a pitch out on that. As the pitch was high, and it was perfect timing as Ellis was able to fire it down. As next pitch on the outside, 2-1 is your count. Credit out to the uh, second baseman as well, Joshua Bain. Did a great job reaching out as this one's low in the ground for ball three. Uh, but Joshua Bain made a wonderful play on that to reach down and get the tag in time and get that first out of this top of the first inning. Three-one pitch, low again. So four balls will put the second man on base is Trevor Porter. It's now we're in the three hole spot. That's going to be number 29, Colton Linderman. Second baseman, number 29, Colton Linderman. With one man on, one away. Poor Payne is tightening up, looking to force a double play here. It's Gullage. Gets the call. And he fires in there. Looks like it was good for. I think he might have caught the corner play, but the umpire said nope, that's ball one. Kind of deceiving from the single, ladies and gentlemen. As Gullis will fly back to first, throw not in time as Porter was able to get back easily, standing up. Grote did a great job just blocking it and getting it down. 
looked like it caught some dirt on the way up. The throw blocked it, prevented the runner from advancing the second on the wild throw. As next pitch, that's going to be another ball. So Linderman ahead of the count here. Let's see if he gets the green line. And he goes off swinging. This is going to be lined down the second baseman. They're going to try to turn two. And shortstop dropped it. It was uh, set up perfectly. Bain did a great job throwing in, but Bailey just couldn't handle the throw. He uh, just didn't watch the ball the way in and dropped it. So that's going to be man on first and second now for section as they're early on in scoring position with only one out. And that's going to bring up their cleanup hitter, number 44, Ty Bolt. Catcher, number 44, Ty Bolt. Gullis runs back, looks at the second base runner back. Fires first pitch, ball one. Gullis going to have to do what he needs to as far as checking the runner back, but it seems like he is keeping his eye on the runners just a little bit more than necessary. And this is going to be lined down to the shortstop, and Bailey this time, he makes the uh, throw cleanly. Beautiful play by Bailey. As heads up play, he looks and got the lead man out heading to third. Uh, but that will put the Base count still the same, man on first and second. But the two outs now is Fort Payne looking to get out of this inning unscathed. Looking to do some damage is going to be number two, Dylan Davis, though, for section. Yes, Linderman will be on second, bolt on first for the Lions. With two away, getting the top of the first. Davis will take the first pitch on the outside. Ball to one. Once again, this is going to be down in the dirt for ball two. Dylan Davis ahead in the count. So once again, if he gets the green light, swing away. And he swings at a high pitch. It's going to be popped up high in the outfield. Center fielder calling for it for Fort Payne. He gets under it, and he's got it. Great play by the center fielder, Levy Hall, calling off the right fielder, Anderson, as he settles under it, gets the final out of this first inning. And Fort Payne comes away unscathed, tied up here at the end of the top of the first. On the mound for the section lines will be number 12, Ethan Clark. Catching for him will be Ty Bolt. First baseman will be Dylan Davis. Second baseman will be Colton Linderman. Third base will be Trevor Porter. Shortstop will be uh, Wiley McCutcheon. Uh, left footer will be Rod Bradford. Center fielder will be Trevor Gentry. And play right field will be Peyton Pruitt. As leading off for the Fort Payne Wildcats will be number eight, Robbie Graham. He shows bunt, lays it down the third base line, and it's going to be safe. Great bunt by Robbie Graham with the leadoff. Put it right down the third base line, but it was still close enough to the mound where the, the pitcher had to come off. And Clark, he looked like he slipped, trying to throw to first. And uh, they're very lucky that uh, the wild the throw went to go over the first baseman's head. They hit the fence and stopped short. Because if not, Robbie Graham would have been easily been able to take second base. But uh, here up in the second spot is going to be number 14, Jordan Bain for Fort Payne. As he shows bunt and fakes it, and this is actually going to take as the runner's gone, and he's out by a mile. Beautiful throw by the catcher. It's Ty Bolt, number 44. As uh, it looked like Section might have been in the head of the Fort Payne, that play caller there is. They were ready for it. It looked like he threw it high as the pitch out, and Ty Bolt did a beautiful job throwing it down there and beating the runner by at least three steps. So that's one away here in the bottom of the first. 
Is this pitch on the outside? 2 0 is your count. Or 1 1, rather. In the excitement, I missed the first pitch. Not uh, what the call was. I guess they said that the uh, the hitter, Bain, actually let his butt attempt down. As this one's lying down the right side off the dugout. Uh, sections, players in the dugout, they, uh, they're not awake now. They are. They hit right off the front as it's them scattering. Thank goodness no one was hit, though. But it looked like uh, maybe Jordan Bain was trying to guard the plate and not letting the catcher come up to uh, grab the throw a little early. So it is one and two now is your count after that foul ball. Clark ahead, he delivers. And this is going to be fouled off once again down the third base line as Bain defended the inside of the plate. I want to remind everyone as the umpire is waiting until the ball is cleared off, uh, if you do miss any of our broadcasts or you'd like to know what's all going on, you can go to our Facebook page, WOLW Video Productions, and keep up with all of the happenings and uh, what's coming up in our events. As the one-two pitch, this is going to be... Strike three. Great pitch there from Ethan Clark as he just blows right by Jordan Bain and gets out number two here in the bottom of the first. Catch. Still zeros on the board as now Jay Tyler Ellis. here in the third spot. It's going to be the catcher for Fort Payne, number two, Jay Tyler Ellis. This one high inside and caught Ellis swinging. As Clark here looking to go one, two, three, a little bit unconventional route as uh, they did allow the first man on base, but they threw him out a second, attempting to steal as that was an outside ball one. But either way, Clark looking to go one, two, three, regardless of how he's doing it. this one high inside once again and Ellis wants that one high and Clark's obliged and just throwing it in there saying here you go swing, swing away as Ellis down in the count and this one throws him up strike three beautiful pitch by Ethan Clark because he threw everything on the inside and look he threw maybe a slider curveball on him there and froze him up on the inside of the plate and that's going to be the end of one Score still tied up, zero all here in the 2017 Wildcat Classic. We'll be right back after these messages. They're coming from everywhere. Alabama, Georgia, even Tennessee car buyers are coming to see what the big deal is at High Country Toyota in Scottsboro. Lower prices, lower payments, 100% credit approval, and the high five advantage that includes warranty forever. Plus, own a new 2017 Corolla. Zero down, 0% 0 APR financing, only $289 a month. Or own a new 2017 Camry. Zero down, 0% 0 APR financing, just $339 a month. And get two years free maintenance with your purchase. They're coming from everywhere to High Country Toyota. You should too. At WOLWvideo.com, you can see high school and college sports from all over the area. It's local, it's free, and it's on the web. With so much video and highlights, it's almost like being there. There to go. Dude, run! WOLWvideo.com. It's okay to dream. We're back with more local high school sports. And 
welcome back to the top of the second inning of the 2017 Wildcat Classic here at Fort Payne High School. Still in the mound is going to be Michael Gulledge for the Fort Payne Wildcats. As leading off for the section lines will be number five, Rod Branford. Got left over for step five, in here, looking to get something Rod going. Branford. That section did get three men on base. In that first inning wasn't able to get anything going. One was thrown out, trying to steal. As they look to try to duplicate that and maybe even get more. He's trying to chase Michael Village here in the early on as this one will be fouled off harmlessly. Outside, that's going to be a ball. Oh, this pitch swinging on the inside, just tipped by Branford. Even the count up to all. Let's get on the inside. It's going to be strike three. Ellis couldn't field it clean, though. And he'll throw it down. And that's a high throw. Great job by J.C. Grote going up there to the next level and pulling it back down. And that will be a strikeout for Michael Gulledge. That will bring up number 12, the pitcher for section, Ethan Clark. So he'll be hitting in the seventh spot. Looking to help himself here. Maybe get on base. Get some runs in as this one's popped up and will go just foul over the third baseline dugout over there in the Fort Payne Wildcats. This one high, waving the count up one all. Power will give it to him. Great pitch. One ball, two strikes. As this one will be lined up to the shortstop. And Bailey takes it off the hop. Great throw down the first base to Grote. As that will be two away here in the top of the second inning. Great to see Trey Bailey shaking off. He had an error early on trying to force the double play. And he's uh, filled the ball seven, clean twice Wyoming. now. It looks like he's able to get that out of his head. As now at the bat will be number seven, Wiley McCutcheon for section. As the shortstop swinging away, this one off the backstop came back. He had it dug down and almost caught him. Oh one, McCutcheon that is himself. Gulla just got him swinging on that one. 0-2. That's Gulledge. Looking to go 1-2-3. And this one will be lined down the right side. It looks like second baseman got it. And that will be the third out. Great job by the second baseman, Joshua Bain. Fire again, get the final out of this top of the second inning. And we're still knotted up, zero all. Bottom of the second, still on the mound for section, right number 12, Ethan Clark, who will be facing off against number five, Will Anderson of Fort Payne. It's Anderson, the cleanup hitter, there in the fourth spot, looking to get something going. He has this one on the inside, low and out, ball one. Clark had great success in that first inning, going one, two, three to the top three hitters, looking to duplicate that success. It's Anderson, once again on the inside, low for ball two. Two and count. This one catches the corner of the plate for 
guys won. Fair. And that's going to put a man on first here at the bottom of the second inning. Great job, Anderson. Getting the blooper out to right field. And that will bring up a man in the five spot. That's going to be the second baseman, number 19, Joshua Bain. Clark for section did give up a, the first hit in the first inning. But uh, they did get catch him stealing, so technically he did go one, two, three. Let's see if they can get that back. He tries to pick off Anderson at first, and Anderson's back safely standing. So Clark keeping a check on first. Let's see if he fires the first pitch in. There we go. Bain will take it out to the outfield, and this is going to be down for a hit. And that's going to be uh, advancing to third is Anderson. I almost missed that. I was focusing on Bain getting into first safely, and Anderson heads up play, turn two, and went straight to third. Great call by Coach Johnson there, waving him on, and that puts the man in a uh, major scoring position now. So, uh, man on first and third for Fort Payne. No outs here in the bottom of the second inning, hitter. and coming number up to bat will be number Riley 13, Hall. the designated hit hitter, Briley Hall. As he gets the call down from Coach Johnson. Clark checks over at first. One of four fans definitely going to push the pressure here and try to take second. As Paul fakes the bunt. But either way, Clark catches the corner of the plate for strike one. Four fans is notorious for putting other teams in positions where you have to make a play. Uh, they're not afraid to steal home plate on you. They're not afraid to take second base while man's at third and then try to send him home. So you have to be on your toes at all times in the field if you're the visiting team playing Fort Payne. As this another butt and he uh, player's going to be down to second. That's Joshua Bain. Great job of Briley Hall protecting the plate. As the catcher, Bolt had to wait until it got all the way down the last second. Catcher had the dirt and he just couldn't pop up and make the play in time. So now man in second and third. Anything to outfield, you got to think it's score two. As Hall looks to lay down another butt, pulls it back once again. That's going to be in there for a strike. So one and two is your count. And you wonder if uh, Coach Johnson's going to let Bradley Hall attempt to bunt again or if they're going to pull back and say, hey, go ahead and take a hack at it. One, two pitch. This is going to be high for ball two. Two pitch. This is going to be low and Hall lines out foul. Hall went down and tried to dig that one out of the dirt. But it will still be a 2 2 count here in the bottom of the second inning. Runners at second and third as no one has scored just yet here in this Wildcat Classic. It's a beautiful Saturday. As Clark almost caught the corner, the bottom corner of the plate. But that's going to make a full count now. 3 2. It's now pressure on Ethan Clark. And three runs scathed in that first inning. Now under pressure, full count. Here we go. It's going to be wild outside. Ball four. Bases loaded here in the bottom of the second inning. Fort Payne. Sitting pretty. 
We got Briley Hall down at first, Joshua Bain on second, Will Anderson at third. And now coming up to bat will be number 22, J.C. Grote. Batting in the seventh spot. That's Clark. Looking to get out of this inning, out of this jam as quickly as possible. And we got it stealing home, and he's going to be safe. What a call by Ford Payne's coach Johnson. Bases loaded. Doesn't even leave it up to fate. He says, hey, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. We're just going to take it home and take it to you, and you better make the play. As <laughs> base runner took home plate. Wonderful play by Anderson getting down and uh, tagging the plate before the tag was applied. And that's 1-0 just like that here in the bottom of the second inning. As Bain events to third and Hall now on second. Now Grote swinging. That'll be a strike. It's 0-2 now is the count. Well, that's something that's just as a pitcher, you've got enough to think about when you've got no outs and you got the bases loaded. Now you're having to worry about are they about to try to steal home again? Because Fort Payne, they they will do that on you. They're not scared to. The players are well coached and well taught by Coach Johnson. That's this one low and swinging is Grote. And it's going to be strike three. They're going to have to throw it down to first. And he's going to be safe as uh, look, the first baseman came off the base trying to make the catch. And he picked up the ball and didn't get back to the bag in time because he had the ball in his right hand and he didn't have it in his glove. And he tagged Grote with his left hand, or actually Grote ran into him. But the uh, umpire is saying that he did not step on first before Grote did. It looked like it might have been ties. You know, usually tie goes to the runner. And now the umpire is coming out. They're going to have a little chat about it. They say, hey, did you see him get to first base before he did or make the tag? And nope. They're going to say he didn't. And Sexton's coach is going to be turned away as he came out arguing that. And we got bases loaded once again. Nobody out. Now up to bat is going to be number 21, Trey Bailey for Fort Payne. So once again, base is loaded. Fort Payne leading 1-0. Last time base is loaded, they, they stole home on the very first pitch. Let's see if Fort Payne keeps the pressure on Ethan Clark here. It's Bailey swinging, fouled that one off. I think it might have caught his own foot there. Let's go put him down 0-1. Clark desperately needs some help here. Trying to get out of this bottom of the second inning. And this one's going to be on the outside low for ball two. Actually, uh, ball one, rather. His first pitch was swinging, fouled off, so that evens the count up one all. Last is the ball two. They're saying, hey, calm down, Clark. Just settle down and throw your pitch. We got you. As it's two one count. Last thing you want to do is walk in a runner. This one fired on the inside. And the ball three. It's three one. Clark looking a little unsettled on the mound. Just needs to settle down in a second. As he stares down Bailey. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Ball four. So that's going to walk in a man. That's going to make Fort Payne two, section zero. Bases still loaded. Nobody out here in the bottom of the second inning. And section's coach is going to come out. Going to have a word with Clark. It's four straight balls. And I wonder if they're going to pull him. They are. And that's going to be it for Clark as he gave up two runs here in the bottom of the second inning and leaving the bases loaded with nobody out. So that will bring in number 14, Taylor Payne, pitching now for a section. And he will come in facing Levy Hall from Fort Payne. A few position changes now as Clark will now move out to shortstop. And that will bring in, well, actually, uh, Wiley McCutcheon. That's first bit swing and strike one. Uh, Wiley McCutcheon was playing shortstop. Now he will be in the dugout. As 
pain. Inheriting a messy situation here in the bottom of the second inning. Nobody out. This is going to be thrown down to third base, and he's gone. And throw is uh, was almost in time, but the catcher just couldn't make the play. Is Riley Hall running home there? And he did a great job of just staying down the lane, made the third baseman try to make the throw, and he couldn't do it in time. That's 3 0 Fort Payne. Look like I didn't know if Hall was maybe trying to steal third or, or steal home or if he was just say going to get halfway down and force the throw back to third and then take home. But either way, it works out for the Wildcats. Is nobody out. The runners will advance. We got Bailey on second and Grote on third now. But nobody out. 3-0 for Payne leading here in the bottom of the second. And this will be fired in. And they're going to say that say is a ball. Maybe he did call a strike. Couldn't quite tell. It's hard to tell from our angle, but either way, the count's 1-2. It's Levy Hall. Going okay, to continue this Fort Payne rally in the bottom of the second. He wears it well off the left arm. It's Payne trying to come off the inside, and Levy Hall said, I'm fine where I'm at. I don't mind wearing that one. If you don't base the easy way, he'll earn it. And his base is loaded once again in the bottom of the second inning. And coming up is going to be the leadoff man for Fort Payne. Uh, the left Graham. hitter, number eight, Robbie Graham. Robbie Graham bunted his first time up. And then got caught trying to steal second here in the first, bottom of the first inning. As he showed he's got he can bunt very well. Let's see if Coach Johnson calls upon him again. He's going to be swinging. This will be fouled off over the backstop. 0-1 early in the count. Mitch down low for ball. He has a count up one all here in the bottom of the second inning. As Graham settles in, and Payne delivers. It's going to be grounded down the first base line, and it's going to be thrown down to home. Great play by the first baseman for section. That's Dylan Davis. As he fielded it cleanly, instead of trying to take the easy out, he went in and forced home and got the force at home plate. And that's going to be the first out of the bottom of the second inning for section. Base is still loaded, though. Not out of trouble just yet. And it's coming up will be the hitting in the second spot. Number 14, Jordan Bain. He struck out his first time at that against Clark. Now this will be his first time facing Taylor Payne, though, be in the bottom of the second inning. Bain looking to bunt and pitch gets away. No one goes. I've been uh, not quite sure if it came off the bat or not of Bain. Couldn't quite tell what the umpire called there. Full Payne didn't look in any hurry, tried to advance to home. Second pitch on the way is going to be popped up off foul ball. As we settle in here, still one away, bases loaded. Four paint leading 3 0 here in the bottom of the second inning. Pitch is high. It's going to be the ball. There's the count 2 1. First pitch was a uh, ball. Did not come off the bat of Bain, so Bain ahead in the count, 2 1. Bain swinging, pop this one out left field. It's going to be in there safely as runner advances. Now bringing another man home. He's going to get in there, and now advancing the third is uh, Graham all the way from first, and that's going to be a double for Jordan Bain as he pushes in. Two men make it 5-0, Fort Payne in the bottom of the second inning.
That's going to bring up number two, Jay Tyler Ellis. Jay Tyler went out with a strikeout in his first appearance, the ball in the first. That was against Clark, though. Maybe he can duplicate the success of Bain as Bain struck out his first time against Clark and then faced Payne for the first time and was able to get the double. Uh, two RBI hit. And it's now Bolt's going to come out and talk to Payne a little bit. So once again, folks, uh, if you'd like to know more information about us at WOW, you can go to our Facebook page. You can like us there. It's WOW Media Productions. We post schedules and uh, our morning shows and lots, lots of other stuff we do. Or you can follow us through our Instagram page. Once again, it's just WOW Video. Just look for the shield, uh, the red shield with the gold letters on it and WOW. As Ellis takes pitch number two for a ball. This one in the dirt once again. That's going to be another ball. 3-0 is the count. As Payne struggling here. Clark struggled early on in the bottom of the second inning. It ended whenever he walked in a runner. And now Payne in the same situation here. He just gave up two runs and looks like he's trying not to walk in here another man. And as this one's going to be fired on the inside for strike. Great pitch by Payne. Payne in the corner of the plate. Ellis is obliged to take, said, hey, just throw me a strike, and we'll see what happens. And Payne looking to do so again. Count 3-1. Bases loaded with one out. Actually, yeah, uh, men on second and third, rather. This one fouled off. This is going to be full count. Bases have been loaded most of the spot on the second innings. Sorry there, Bain did kind of throw it, throw it off a little bit, I guess you can say, as he hit the double, scored two men. And there's the full count. That's going to be a ball. So the good news is Payne did not walk someone in, but it is bases loaded once again here in the bottom of the second inning with only one away. Fort Payne leading over section 5-0, and that's going to bring up the cleanup hitter for the Fort Payne Wildcats, number five, Will Anderson. Interestingly enough, he actually led off this bottom of the second inning, and he was able to get a hit and start this four pain rally as they started off. And five runs later, here he is right back at the bat in the bottom of the second. So Anderson takes pitch one, strike. Once again, Taylor Payne painting the inside corner of the plate. He gets out early in the count. Pitch all in the way. It's going to be high outside, ball one. <laughs> this one high on the inside for ball two. Two and one now is the count for Anderson. So he's got bases loaded here in the bottom of the second inning. This one low, but will catch the bottom corner of the plate. Strike two. Two all is the count. Going swinging down the third base line, just foul. Anderson staying alive here. They'll count two all. Oh, yeah. 
as Anderson fights this one off. It's going down the first baseline. He's going to come home and get the force out at home. Once again, great play by the first baseman, Dylan Davis. Second time this inning, he's done so. Defended it well and came home for the force out. So that's two away in the bottom of the second. Bases still loaded for Payne Bay. Now coming up to bat will be Team Joshua Bain. His last at bat was once again, just like Anderson here in the bottom of the second inning. He was able to get a single out of it. So we'll just continue this Fort Payne rally. And he was the attempt to bunt, but wisely pulled it back as Payne left the outside for ball one. Second pitch on the way. Bain once again looking to bunt. He's going to push this one over the backstop for strike one. One and one is your count. This bottom of the second inning. And this one, late decision by Bain trying to swing. Payne blew it by him. One and two is the count. There's an outside trying to get Bain to swing. Taylor Payne looking to get the punch out here. Finish off this bottom of the second inning finally. And Payne's going to keep it alive just a little bit longer. So he got it off the backstop. is loaded two away in the bottom of the second inning settling in swinging once again staying alive fouled off they definitely making pain put in the work here in this bottom of the second inning Once again, fouled off by Bain. That's Payne. He's only been in here for a short time here in the bottom of the second inning, but he's already wore out. Wish I kept up with the amounts of pitches thrown, but I know that it's uh, it's enough to make you sweat. It was a beautiful day here at Fort Payne High School for the 2017 Wildcat Classic. Breeze is just nice. But if you're in the shoes of Taylor Payne right now, it's, it's anything but breezy and beautiful. He's done a great job so far as he inherited bases loaded here in the bottom of the second. And he's got him strike three as Payne gets out of the bottom of the second inning. But not before he five gives up two so runs, and that's going to be 5 nothing. Fort Payne leads five, after two. We'll be right back after these messages. 
Andy White down here at Bobby Ledbetter's Twin City at 1411 Glen Boulevard. We're uh, having a great sale today. We've gotten rid of a lot of our inventory. Got a lot of fresh stuff coming in. Got things that are going to be coming in every day. Listen, guys, everybody's right now screaming and hollering, bring your tax money down here. We'll get you financed on something. We don't want your tax money. You come down here, save your tax money. We're going to get you financed on the full amount. All you got to do is come down here and see me or any of the other sales representatives down here. We're going to treat you fair. We're going to treat you nice. And you're going to love the great deals that we're giving down here at Bobby Ledbetter's Twin City. Y'all come down here and see us. You can contact us on the phone at 256-844-2210 or shop us on the web at Twin City Used Cars. Don't take the first deal that comes along when you can do better at BobbyLedbetter.com and Twin City Used Car Sales. Located at 1411 Glen Boulevard in South Fort Payne. Hey guys, I'm Rick. And I'm Bubba from the Rick and Bubba Show. Hey, we want to give a shout out to our friends at Well of Living Water Video Productions. That's right, Rick. And we want to thank Steve, Matt, and the whole gang up at WOLW in DeKalb County for providing clean, wholesome family programming 24-7. That's right, guys. Now you can catch us Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. And again at 10 p.m. right here on WOLW Video Productions. Well of Living Water is all in good, clean fun. Do not miss it. We're back with more local high school sports. And welcome back here. Top of the third inning. Set about to be underway for fame leading section 5-0. Leading off for the section Lions will be man in the nine hole. Number 15, Peyton Pruitt. As Michael Gellich still on the mound for Fort Payne. First pitch. And then outside for ball one. That is the right fielder, 15, Peyton Pruitt. Second pitch just off the inside. And it did glance off the batter. As Peyton Pruitt will be on first after being hit by the pitch did a great job sent in there and taking it like a man puts the leadoff man on and that comes to the top of the order now for section that's going to be number 60 Trevor Gentry as he got on base his first time at bat but got caught trying to steal second he swings way down the first base line and it's going to be fair just squeezed down the line and now uh, going down to third is going to be Pruitt. As Gentry did a wonderful job there pushing it down and Pruitt was on his horse getting turning second. He made it down safely. That's going to put runners in the corners with nobody out here and the top of the third inning and up to bat now third for section number Trevor 30. Porter. Trevor Porter. And section gave up five runs that bottom of the second inning. They're quickly trying to make it back up. One high. So, like, it might have been a pitch out. As Gentry got caught stealing the first time on base. Four Payne looking for him to try to take second again. So fired in for strike one. One and one is the count. Porter, his first uh, time at bat, he was walked. down the shortstop. Man's going to score for section. As they go to first, they get the first out. But section will get the run in from third. Makes it 5-1. Great job by Porter. Able to push the man in and get the RBI. That sent Gentry down as second. One away and now up to bat for section. It's going to be the third spot. Number 29, Colton Linderman. Jay Tyler's came down to get a quick little chat with Gulledge. His runner is still in scoring position for section. Gulledge looks him back, fires, and a strike. So one 
pitch. It's going to be fouled off. 0-2 now. As Letterman fouled it off behind the plate. Goers looking to pick up a quick second out here. The top of the third. Pitch is high for ball one. Five one is your score. Sexton still looking to do some damage here in the top of the third inning. This is going to be pitched high on the inside and fouled off by the backstop. Linderman staying alive. Quickly, uh, it looked like he had him back, but he just couldn't catch him in time. As a uh, Gullich had the pickoff, but no one was there to receive the throw. So Gullich did a great job just holding on to it. At least keep it doing a great job of keeping Gentry by, held back at second. As swing is checked, it's going to be another ball. going to be lined down to third baseman and slipped is that's going to be number 14 Jordan Bain as he was planting his foot to throw down to first and he couldn't get it and that's going to be a hit men on first and third now for section as coming up to the cleanup hitter number 44 Ty Bolt catcher Ty Bolt still only one out here at top of third inning Bolt reached last time on a fielder's choice. As Gullage in some trouble, just like his counterparts were in the bottom of the second inning for section. Clark and Payne both giving up some runs, and now Gullage finds himself in the same situation. 5 1 for Payne leading in the top of the third. Pitches on the outside for a ball. down low. Just outside the strike zone for another ball. This one's going to be lined back up the middle. It's going to be in for a base hit as one man will score. And the run on first be held at second. It's a great job by Bolt driving in a run, makes it 5 2 here in the top of the third inning. Still only one out. As he would get a courtesy run here first. And then on first and second for section. And now up to bat will be number two, Dylan Davis, for section. First baseman, Dylan Davis. Left high, ball one. This one fouled off the catcher's mask. Dropped 
down the first base line for a hit. Actually went down to second base in between first and second. Man's going to score again. And section looks like they're trying to reach the third. And Fort Payne's got him. There you go. Beautiful play to recover there. As the catcher came up and cut off the throw. Actually, rather, it just looked like he might have just hit, missed the cutoff, man. But either way, it worked out perfectly for Fort Payne. They did give up the run to make it 5-3, but they get that second out. And now they have a man down at first. And up to Rod bat will Branford. be number five, Rob Branford, Rod Branford. As he struck out his last time at bat. Strike on the outside, swinging. That's top of the third inning. Gulledge looking to get the final out. Trying to get out of here after giving up three runs. And Branford will line this one out to left field. Left fielder gets under it, makes the catch. Great play by number eight, Robbie Graham, to get out of this top of the third inning. Giving up three runs, it's 5-3. Fort Payne still on top. So going into the bottom of the third, section only trailing 3-5 now as they got three runs back in the top of the third. Uh, still on the mound for section will be number 14, Taylor Payne. And then leading off for Fort Payne will be number, number 13, Riley Hall. Riley was walked his first time at bat. This is his first time facing Payne, though, today. That's Payne's first pitch. And hit off the backside of Hall. So Hall gets on base. He earns his first, he earns that first base. And his leadoff man put on base by Payne, and that's going to bring up number 22, J.C. Great, now for Payne. Some instructions from the dugout. The lefty now will settle in. And on first, nobody out of here in the bottom of the third. And it's going to be hit high in the outfield. It's going to drop down in for a hit. And quickly to second as the ball is loose. But first base did a great job coming up. And cleaning up the mess. So that'll be a hit for Grote. And that'll put Hall on second. Up to bat's going to be number 21, Trey Bailey. With nobody out, two on. He, first time that bat, was walked. As Bailey gets the call from Coach Johnson. He'll step into the batter's box. Richard Payne will settle in, get the call from the catcher. And Bailey's going to take a timeout. He's going to look at his wristband one more time. He'll make sure he's got the correct call from Coach Johnson. He's now going to be back in the batter's box. Now we get the first pitch. It's going to be a bunt, and that's going to be out foul. As Bailey, lucky enough for him that that ball went foul where no one could get a hold of it because he popped that one straight up in the air. Anyway, that will be strike one. Second. Once again. Here comes the second pitch. Gonna be bunted to him over time, and Bailey pulls back wisely. So, so that was high on the inside for ball one. One on one is your count. Man on first and second for Fort Payne. Nobody out here in the bottom of the third inning. Oh, 
bunt attempt. And this is going to be put right on the third base line. And the pitcher out of the round, he couldn't just quite get it. And it's a hard play to make. Looked like he might have been trying to turn to get the man on third, but he was not able to make the play at all. So that's a beautiful bunt by Bailey. And that's going to be bases loaded in a very familiar situation for section pitchers here in the early going. As there's nobody away, and up to bat is going to be the nine man, Levy Hall. Hall. Got him. That's what got uh, the first starting pitcher for section. He had the Clark in trouble, and his base is loaded. And that's where Payne came in, the base is loaded, and he finds himself in the same situation here in the bottom of the third inning. And Hall's first at bat, he was hit by a pitch. Let's see. He's got up his sleeves here as he first pitch swinging strike one. Strike off the outside corner. All thought about a bunt, but he pulled it back, thinking it was good on the outside, and he did a great job sneaking it in on the corner. It's all looking to get out of the this jam here in the bottom of the third inning. Yeah! It's going to be hit. Foul ball off behind the backstop. Count will still hold. 0 oh 2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Payne gets the first out of the bottom of the third inning. Base is still loaded, though, is only one man out. And that's going to up, bring up the leadoff the man for Fort Payne, Robbie number Graham. Eight, Robbie Graham. So things still not looking pretty for Payne here as he faces the top of the order in the bottom of the third inning. High out of the strike zone for ball one. Graham was able to get on by a bunt first time at bat, as this is going to be in there for a strike. And his second time at bat, he reached on Fielder's Choice. It's going to be a bunt attempt. This is going to be up and bunted high. Third baseman makes a great play, and they're going to get the force out at third. Beautiful play by the third baseman. That's number 30, Trevor Porter. Came charging up, caught, made the catch in the air as they got the tag at third for the final line. We'll be right back after these messages. Auction! Valley Head! 35-acre farm, trophy bass lake, lakefront home, guest cabin, Saturday, April 22nd, nationalauctiongroup.com. Auction, Valley Head, 35-acre farm, trophy bass lake, lakefront home, guest cabin, Saturday, April 22nd, nationalauctiongroup.com. Auction, Valley Head, 35-acre farm, Trophy Bass Lake, Lakefront Home, Guest Cabin, Saturday, April 22nd, nationalauctiongroup.com, 888-465-1568, Are you in the market for a new or used vehicle? At Donahue Chevrolet, we have over 400 vehicles priced to move. Our new Chevrolets are employee price, plus you keep all the rebates. That means savings as high as $10,000. From the moment you walk in the door until you drive off in your new vehicle, we guarantee a sales process that puts your needs first. 
And don't forget, our on-site GM certified technicians are always here to ensure there are many worry-free miles in your vehicle's future. Come by Donahue Chevrolet and expect more from your local Chevy dealer. Hello, my name is Jeff Sayer with Dizzy Dean Fireworks in Rainsville, Alabama. I just wanted to take a second of your time to uh, thank Steve Black and all of the staff at WLW for helping us out this year with our fireworks season. Sales were up tremendously. We had a lot of customers coming in saying that they had saw the commercial and the advertisement on TV and on Facebook. And I just wanted to say thank you very much for all of your help and all of your support. Thank you. To find out just how affordable it is to have your business advertised on local television, give us a call. 256-996-5049. We're back with more local high school sports. At the top of the fourth inning here at Fort Payne High School, we've got a new pitcher for Fort Payne. That's going to be number eight, Robbie Graham. He'll come in to relieve number seven, Michael Gulledge. As Gulledge got chased out of the game that last inning, apparently giving up three runs. So Fort Payne will make the change and leading off here at the top of the fourth inning will be number 12, Ethan Clark. So 5-3 is your score, Fort Payne on top. And it's Graham's first pitch. It's going to be grounded off foul ball, strike one. Clark's last time at bat, he flied out back in the second inning. This one's going to be popped up. The uh, pitcher's going to get under it. He's calling for it, but the third base is going to come up. But he's going to make the catch as that's uh, number 14, Jordan Bain. Great job coming up, making the catch and calling for the ball. That's the first out of this inning. Now that will bring up number 14, Taylor Payne. As the pitcher will be in that up to bat now for a section. A uh, quick change right quick as uh, Graham did come in to relieve Gulledge, so we have some position changes. That was fouled off. Uh, now playing first base is going to be uh, number 19, Joshua Bain. Playing second base will be number 15. I don't have his name handy just yet. I'll get that to you in a second. Uh, right fielder is second pitch will be a ball. Right fielder will now be J.C. Grote. Uh, moving to left field from right field will be number five, Will Anderson. As I don't have number 15, Fort Payne, who's now playing second on the roster. As that one's in for a ball. 15 uh, is going to be Garrett Connor. So Connor now playing second for Fort Payne, as this one's going to be popped up. Third baseman Bain goes back to look for it. He settles under it, and that's going to be out number two. So two quick outs, both by Mr. Jordan Bain. As now up to bat will be number 15, Peyton Pruitt, for the section lines. Pruitt's last at bat, he was hit by a pitch. This one is going to be just off the corner of the plate for a ball. Peyton Pruitt. for a ball. 3-0 is the count. Pruitt ahead and early on here in the top of the fourth inning. Four paint leading 5-3. He's going to be fired just across the bottom of the plate for strike one. Yes. Swing and a miss. Full count now. As Graham fighting back, getting two straight strikes after throwing three balls. Payoff is going to be in the dirt. Ball four. 
So Pruitt will be on first, and that'll bring up the leadoff man, number 60, Trevor Gentry. I think that one spot for section. He's singled and reached on an error so far tonight. Looking to maybe even tie the game up on a one swing here as they trail by two with a man on first. Two away, pitch on the outside for ball one. It's going to be down in the dirt, ball two. As Jay Tyler Ellis did a great job blocking the ball, keeping the runner at first base. Two and zero count. There's the pitch. This is going to be grounded down to third base, and Bain's going to make the play for out number three. So Bain records all three outs here in the top of the fourth inning. The we'll go in the bottom of the fourth. Bullpen leading five three. See on the mound for the section line is going to be number fourteen, Taylor Payne. Leading off for Fort Payne will be number 14, Jordan Bain. Young fellow who just made three straight outs at the top of the fourth inning. Leading off for Fort Payne. Let's see what he's got for Jordan encore Bain. here in the bottom of the fourth. This pair of 14 set to face off. Yeah. And first pitch takes him long. It's going back. Let's go to the fence. He's got room, and that's going to be gone. Home run. Jordan Bain putting on a show here in the fourth inning. Recording all three outs in the top of the fourth, and now launching this one over the left field wall. Makes it 6-3, Fort Payne. Got to love it. As he gets some love there from home plate, a little tough love. Push this Wildcat lead up to three. That'll bring up uh, number two, the catcher for Fort Payne, Jay Tyler Ellis. Jay Tyler Ellis. So far, Jay Tyler has struck out his first time at bat and then was walked his second time. As he lays down a bunt down the first base line, forces the pitcher to come out after it, and the pitcher can't make a play. Great bunt by Jay Tyler Ellis. As everyone so far has been putting it down the third base line, Ellis switches it up, puts it down the first base line, and the pitcher tried to make a play barehanded, and he just couldn't quite do it. So Ellis on first with no outs, and that's going to bring up man hit in the four hole. That's going to be number five, Will Anderson. Will Anderson. So far, Will Anderson has hit a single in his first at bat, and his second at bat, he reached on a fielder's choice. Fort Payne looking to extend their lead a little bit more. Nobody out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Anderson blew this one off to the right field. And this is going to fall fair, or foul rather. As uh, right fielder came charging up, just couldn't quite get to it in time. So it falls harmlessly foul. But that will be strike one on Anderson for Payne. Steps back in. Payne waiting to deliver. Checks the man at first. Comes pitch number two. Stop the inside plate for strike two. Back at the pitcher, and it gets up the middle for a base hit. 
And as a pitcher, Payne had to get out of the way, try to make a play on his valiant effort, bounced off the mound, and it just got right up the middle between the second baseman and shortstop. So that puts Anderson at first, Ellis at second. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Coming up to bat for Fort Payne will be number 19, Joshua Bain. Bain has so far hit a single his first time at bat, struck out his second time. Now with the runners in scoring position, looking to extend the Fort Payne lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Pitch. Bain looking to bunt, puts it on the third base line, and it will roll foul before the fielder can make a play on it. That's probably the best outcome of that so far. That was a great bunt by Bain. Looked like he was going to get down there plenty of time. And the ball just rolled foul. So 0 and 1 is your count. As Bolt will come out, have a quick little conversation with Payne. We'll be talking about. He wants to throw here a little situation as the bunter, the hitter just showed that he's willing to bunt to advance the runners. A little bit of strategy coming into play. We appreciate you tuning in to WLW Sports Video. Once again, my name is Matthew Morgan. If you'd like to find out more about us at WLW, be sure to go online to our Facebook page, like us there. It's just search for WLW Video. You can do the same on Instagram as well. Right now we're set up, ready for the second pitch. And check swing by Bain, and he fouls it off in the hole 0 2 now. Bolt gives the call to Payne. Payne receives the signal. It's going to be hit back up the middle. Uh, second baseman is going to make the play. Throws it to second, gets the out, and does not get the man at first, though. And that will be the first out of this inning. Man on first and third. Oh, that's going to be number 13, Riley Hall for Ford Payne. Hall so far has been on base both times at bat. Once by way of a walk, and second time uh, was last inning when he was hit by a pitch. So, runners on the corners, one away. Four Payne leading six to three here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Hall looking to bunt, pulls it back. As pitch was on the outside, I mean, a pitch out call by section, looking to catch Bain down at first, trying to steal second. 1 0 is your count. And the second pitch is going to be rounded down to first, or actually, no, it's going to go out to the right field. You can quite see the ball as one man's going to score. Good job by Hall forcing it down the right field line. I lost track of it here in the sun, and it's actually got it to right field, but he's going to get a single along with the RBI. Makes it 7-3, Fort Payne. Runner still in the corners here. Bain advances to third. But one away, and that's going to bring up now number 22, J.C. Grote for Fort Payne. That's Grote. Reached on the fielder's choice and then hit a single. His two times as bad as that's going to be still at home as Bain tried to take home. And Payne, uh, looked like the section lines was ready for it. Payne threw down a bolt. Bolt was waiting on it with the ball. And Bain looked like he might have tried to stop and step around the tag. And I think that's what Coach Johnson is going to come out to talk about. Uh, he's going to argue that he stepped around the tag and hit the home plate. It's hard to tell from our angle. The throw was definitely in time, but Bain did elude the tag at first. And I think that's what Coach Johnson is going to argue there. Either way, Briley Hall did reach second base. And Coach Johnson's going to come home now and talk to the home plate umpire. 
It's not done just yet. Payne and Bolt will have a power of their own out on the mound. As potentially this is uh, two away here in the bottom of the fourth. Runner still in scoring position for Fort Payne. So they lead seven to three, and Chris Johnson's going to be turned away. Umpire says, I'm not changing my call. That was what I saw, and that's what I'm going to call. So that is two outs. Root now will settle back in. On the inside for a ball. That will even the count, one all. This group looking to push in Hall from second. And he will call a timeout just as soon as Payne was winding up. The umpire did grant the timeout though. Four pain leading 7 3 here in the bottom of the fourth. Yeah. And Grote would take this one off the inside for another ball. 2 1 is your count. Actually, looking to get out of this bottom of the inning after giving up two runs so far. Grote fouls them one off behind the backstop. The good news for section is the last time they did give up runs, they were able to get them back. Well, not all of them back. They gave up five runs in the bottom of the second. At the top of the third, they responded with three runs of their own. So it's been scoreless since this inning. Well, maybe section, there's a lot of fire into them to get back in the game. But first, they got to get out of this inning. Yes, that's going to be strike three. Payne with a beautiful pitch. Gets out of the bottom of the fourth. Gives up two, two runs, runs and extends four Payne's lead to seven to three. We'll be right back after these messages. Westmoreland Tire to two locations, Fort Payne and Alberville, or visit westmorelandtire.com. Dr. William Howard III and his staff are not only qualified and experienced in the field of sports medicine, they're also involved in the local communities. It's not uncommon to see Dr. Howler on the sidelines or in the bleachers watching the game and caring for its athletes. Whether in the Gadsden or Fort Payne office, Gadsden Orthopedics takes your health seriously. Using the latest in technology and treatments, they give their patients the best care possible. We listen, we care, and we heal at Gadsden Orthopedics in Fort Payne on Highway 35 across from Walmart and in Gadsden at 100 Medical Center Drive, Suite 101. Someday soon, as days pass, the hour draws near. Someday soon, this body of sin will be changed. Someday soon, I'll be in heaven praising His name. We're back with more local high school sports. Welcome back to the 2017 Wildcat Classic. Start of the fifth inning here. Four Payne leading seven to three. Looks like we're still gonna have number eight, Robbie Graham on the mound for Fort Payne. And leading off for section will be uh, the man who's been batting in the number two spot, number 30, Trevor Porter. As he 
reached by way of walk and then grounded out. His first at bat is this one's going to be grounded down the sec uh, shortstop. And shortstop's throw is going to be just in time. Great stretch there by first baseman Bain. Is a great play by Bailey. Coming up, able to make the play, make the throw, but Bain completed that great play, making the stretch and gets the first out of this fifth inning. It's now up to bat, will be number 29, Colton Linderman. Colton now for section. He reached by way of error in the second inning as he takes that one for a ball. And then he uh, hit a single, his second at bat. Found off. Two one is your count. It's going to be just high and outside for ball three. So Linderman hanging in here. He will go down swinging on that one. Makes the count full, 3 2. And Graham with the payoff. This is going to be down in strike three. And just in case Ellis will go ahead and apply the tag, he might have dropped it on there. But either way, this is going to be a strikeout for Graham. That's two away here in the top of the fifth inning. That will bring up. Number 44, the catcher for section, Ty Bolt. This Bolt reached on the fielder's choice his first at bat. This one high outside for ball one. And then he hit a single, his second at bat. Now third time at the plate. Another ball, 2 0 is your count. This is going to be chopped just foul. We'll bring the count up to two balls and one strike. Be in the dirt. Makes ball three now. There's the three one pitch. This is going to be chopped. Going to go down the foul line, down the third base way. So, once again, full count here, top of the fifth inning. Going to be fouled off once again. Bolt staying alive here in the top of the fifth. Trying to get some runs back. As they trail four pains seven to three here in the Wildcat Classic. This was going to be lying down the third base and got underneath Bain. It's like a shortstop came over, tried to make a play, and they couldn't do anything. He just had to eat it. As that will be uh, Bolt getting on base on first. He will get a courtesy runner. He might scare, score that as an error. I'm not sure. I mean, look like he might have had a glove on it. Just could have come up with a play. But either way, section will have man on first with two away. And number two, Dylan Davis now up to bat. As he flied out his first time at bat, then hit a single his second time. This one's going to be grounded up to the shortstop, and he's going to flip it over second baseman, and that's going to be the third out. So then, end of the top of the fifth inning. No runs, no harm. Section still trails for Payne, 7-3. So at the bottom of the fifth, still in the mound for section is going to be number 14, Taylor Payne. As leading off this 
Bottom of the fifth for Fort Payne will be number 21, Trey Bailey. Trey reached first base by way of a walk, his first time at bat, and then he reached by a uh, bunt his second time. This Payne's first pitch will be high inside for ball one. Pitch. High this time on the outside though for ball two. This was going to be lined out to outfield. Looks like the fielder will be in position to make the play. The center fielder will make the catch. That's number 60, Trevor Gentry, providing the first out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. As Bailey got under it, just couldn't carry enough. Was hoping the wind would get a little bit more. Either way, that will be a first out. Now up to bat for four pain. Will be the mind fighting usually in the nine spot. Number three, Levy Hall. He was hit by a pitch his first time at bat and then struck out his second time. Took one on the inside, swinging for strike one. And Payne once again ties him up on the inside. All looking to turn on it there on the inside. State comes away with strike number two. This one, ooh, on the square at the back. Hall just, he had to wear that one. He couldn't really do anything and react. He just had to turn away. But he will get on first the hard way with one out here in the bottom of the fifth. That's going to bring up leadoff man for Fort Payne. That's going to be number eight, Robbie Graham. Graham, who has been pitching so far as well for Fort Payne through two innings. Robbie Graham. Gordon, one strikeout, one walk. Has not gave up a run just yet. He will look to help himself a little bit more as they lead by four. As it shows a bunt, he's going to pull it back. That's going to be strike one. So one away here in the bottom of the fifth. Payne's going to throw high. They're going to throw down, trying to catch the man stealing, and they've got him. Great play once again. The catcher, number 44, Ty Bolt. Throws it one right on the rope down to the second baseman. It's Colton Linderman applying the tag. That's two away here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Payne resumes work. This is going to be in there for a strike. So one and two is your count. As Graham took that one down low and in the dirt for ball. So that evens up the count, two all. Let's take the pain settles in. This is going to be popped up high on the infield. Looks like it's going to stay fair. First baseman comes charging in. That's Dylan Davis. Great play by the first baseman. Gets the third and final out in this bottom of the fifth inning. Four pain still leads over section, though. Seven to three. We'll be right back after these messages. They're coming from everywhere. Alabama, Georgia, even Tennessee Carter.
car buyers are coming to see what the big deal is at High Country Toyota in Scottsboro. Lower prices, lower payments, 100% credit approval, and the high five advantage that includes warranty forever. Plus, own a new 2017 Corolla. Zero down, 0% APR financing, only $289 a month. Or own a new 2017 Camry. Zero down, 0% APR financing, just $339 a month. And get two years free maintenance with your purchase. They're coming from everywhere to High Country Toyota. You should too. At WLWVideo.com, you can see high school and college sports from all over the area. It's local, it's free, and it's on the web. With so much video and highlights, it's almost like being there. There to go. Dude, run! WOLWvideo.com. It's okay to dream. We're back with more local high school sports. Welcome back to Fort Payne High School. Here at the top of the sixth inning, Fort Payne leading over section 7 to 3. We're going to have another pitcher change. Uh, Fort Payne will send in number 21, Trey Bailey, to replace Robbie Graham. So that will provide us a few. Position changes here in the sixth inning. Uh, Bailey was playing shortstop. Now replacing him will be number 14, Joshua or Jordan Bain rather. And Joshua Bain will move to second base. Uh, first base now will be number 20, but do not have on the roster. And then that will put Anderson back in right field. And then Robbie you know Graham, who was pitching, will go back to left field right, where he was before. And then third base is uh, number 15. Do not have his name once again. I'm sorry. I'll pull that up one more time. As that bat leading off for section will be number five, Rob Branford. We'll take the first pitch swinging for strike one. Uh, 15 is Garrett Connor. Sorry about that young guy. As this one's going to be popped up on the outfield. And center fielder is going to get under it, make the catch for out number one. As I said, I don't have some of these guys on the roster. I'm trying to come up with it. As they happen, oh, sorry, Garrett Connor there playing third base for Fort Payne. Ethan Clark. And we do not have number 20. Apologize, young fellow over there on first base. But either way, one away here in the top of the sixth inning as that's going to be strike one to number 12, Ethan Clark. He is 0 for 2 so far tonight, or today rather. This is going to be grounded down to the third base, and great play by the third baseman. Fires in for the out. That's Garrett Connor, number 15, saying, You better remember my name by the end of this game. Making the great throw to third, getting the second out. And that's going to bring up now number 14, the pitcher for section, Taylor Payne. Taylor Payne. Bailey looking to go one, two, three. He gets this one popped up. Wide out to center field, and center fielder makes a great play, comes charging up. That's number three, Levy Hall, getting the final out of this top of the sixth inning. Four pay still leads, seven to three. Bottom of the sixth, still on the mound for section. It's gonna be number 14, Taylor Payne. As the lines of section trail by four. Leading off this bottom of the sixth inning will be number 14, Jordan, Jordan Bain for four pay. Last nice time I bet. At last time at bat. Hit a home run. See what he's got in store for us this inning. 
He's going to lay down the bunt. He's going to tip two as they tip that one foul. Bain so far on the night, two for three. Struck out his first time at bat, then hit a single and home run. His next two at bats. As pops this one off, foul ball. So strike two. Now for Payne. As he's trying to get out his bottom of the sixth unscathed, but he knows that top of the seventh inning is coming up, and Section's going to have to make up some distance here as they trail by four or it's going to be game over. This one check swing in the dirt. Umpire says he didn't go, so that's one and two now. If you're not familiar with high school rules, they do only go seven innings now. Used to go nine. I can't remember when they made the change exactly, but they do only go seven innings. And here's the one-two pitch. Give me swung, check swing. That's going to say strike three. And Bolt's going to have to throw it down to first, but that's going to be a strikeout for a section. Taylor Payne recording the first out of this bottom of the sixth inning. And that will bring up number two, the catcher for Fort Payne, Jay Tyler Ellis. Jay Tyler Ellis. So Tyler in his first three at bats has got a strikeout, a walk, and then a bunt his last time I bat. with the first pitch. Pitch it outside for ball one. Second pitch down in the dirt for ball two. Tell Taylor Payne is just exhausted here. He came in the second inning to relieve. But so far, he has faced 21 batters in those four uh, going into four innings now. As this one's going to be hit off the inside of the arm, I'd call it elbow. I'm not sure. Jay Tyler Ellis holding that arm on the inside tight. As he earns that first base the hard way, with one away, he'll be on first. Coach come over to check on him. Seems to be all right. Probably just whispered, hey, don't rub it, buddy. Now that's going to bring up number five, Fort Payne, Will Anderson. Anderson so far has got a pair of singles and also reached on the fielder's choice. His three at bats. So Fort Payne leads here in the bottom of the sixth inning, seven to three. This one's going to be thrown down to second, looking to catch the man stealing. He's going to be safe. Jay Tyler Ellis gets down just in the nick of time, and he will take second base. I'll put a man in scoring position now for Anderson. He looks to protect this four-run lead. Looking to get out of here with maybe an extra run or two, and then go in the seventh inning again. Had the much more cushion. We'll see if Trey Bailey will come back out and try to finish this game for four Payne. But for now, Payne with one away, one man on second will deliver a strike. Low in the dirt is going to be grounded down to the shortstop, and he's going to throw over the first, and he's going to have the second out of the inning. Just for camera there, looked like he got a little lost, but either way, that was the shortstop for section number 12, Ethan Clark, who made the play. Uh, Jay Tyler S did advance to third base there, but the two away now, bottom of the sixth inning. As coming up to bat for Fort Payne will be number 19, Joshua Payne. Joshua so far has got a single, a strikeout, and reached on the fielder's choice is three at-bats. 
Looking to bring in Jay Tyler Ellis, though. Extend this four-run lead for four pain. He takes the first pitch just off the inside of the plate for ball one. Going to be chops to the third baseman. He comes over, makes the play to first. That's out number three. So section gets away. No runs, no, runs no errors. errors. Seven After three. They trail Fort play. Payne here at the NF six. We'll be right back after these messages. Andy White down here at Bobby Ledbetter's Twin City at 1411 Glen Boulevard. We're uh, having a great sale today. We've gotten rid of a lot of our inventory. Got a lot of fresh stuff coming in. Got things that are going to be coming in every day. Listen, guys, everybody's right now screaming and hollering, bring your tax money down here. We'll get you financed on something. We don't want your tax money. You come down here, save your tax money. We're going to get you financed on the full amount. All you got to do is come down here and see me or any of the other sales representatives down here. We're going to treat you fair. We're going to treat you nice. And you're going to love the great deals that we're giving down here at Bobby Ledbetter's Twin City. Y'all come down here and see us. You can contact us on the phone at 256-844-2210 or shop us on the web at Twin City Used Cars. Don't take the first deal that comes along when you can do better at BobbyLetBetter.com and Twin City Used Car Sales. Located at 1411 Glen Boulevard in South Fort Payne. Hey guys, I'm Rick. And I'm Bubba from the Rick and Bubba Show. Hey, we want to give a shout out to our friends at Well of Living Water Video Productions. That's right, Rick. And we want to thank Steve, Matt, and the whole gang up at WOLW in DeKalb County for providing clean, wholesome family programming 24-7. That's right, guys. Now you can catch us Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. And again at 10 p.m. right here on WOLW Video Productions. Well of Living Water is all in good, clean fun. Do not miss it. We're back with more local high school sports. At the start of the seventh inning, section trails Fort Payne seven to three. Potentially the last at this inning here as section needing to score at least four runs to extend this game. Payne's Trey Bailey will be back out there on the mound looking to finish off this game. To do so, he will be facing off the leadoff against number nine, Jacob Gentry. He'll check in nine, and replace Jacob number 15, Gentry. Peyton Pruitt. Here in the top of the seventh inning for section. This one's going to be low. Didn't catch the corner, bottom corner of the plate, so ball one. This one's going to be lined out to right field. And wonderful leaping catch, Will Anderson. The right fielder for Fort Payne, number five. Looked like it might have uh, been able to get over his head, but he made a beautiful leaping over the head catch. That's going to be out number one. That's going to bring up number 60. Top of the order for section, Trevor Gentry. As Bailey definitely giving a tip of the hat to Anderson. He went one, two, three this last inning, looking to do the same. And wrap up the win here. That was going to be outside for ball one. Yeah. I'm going to catch just the corner of the plate, says the umpire. One and one is your count. Swung miss on the outside for strike two. It's going to be just high for ball two. It's Gentry looking to get on base and extend this inning. Only one away. Bailey so far just marching right through this section lineup. That one's going to be just off the plate on the inside. It's going to be a full count. Here's going to be swing and a miss. Bailey got him. 
Strike number one of the night. Strikeout number one, rather. Let's quickly have a look down, but that is a uh, this first strikeout. But that will be out number two here in the top of the seventh. And section lines, last hope here will be rest on the shoulders of number 30, Trevor Porter. So far he's 0 for 2. Reached on a walk. And had two straight ground outs to the shortstop. So looking to extend this. This is going to be fouled back for strike. Bailey delivers beautiful shots. Strike two. It's Bailey looking to finish the game. Here's your one two pitch. It's going to be low. And strike three. Bailey got him. And that will do it. And here at Fort Payne High School, the 2017 Wildcat Classic. Fort Payne will win it over the section line, seven to three. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. If you. Uh, happy to see any of our sponsors. You uh, shop them, patronize them. Please let them know you saw us on WLW. We couldn't do it without our sponsors and without your support. If you'd like to find out more about WLW, please go to Facebook or Instagram. Find us. Just search for WLW Video Productions. I'm Matthew Morgan, thanks so much for tuning in. And have a great night. We'll be right back after these messages. Auction! Valley Head! 35 Acre Farm! Trophy Bass Lake! Lakefront Home! Guest Cabin! Saturday, April 22nd! NationalAuctionGroup.com Auction! Valley Head! 35 Acre Farm! Trophy Bass Lake! Lakefront Home! Guest Cabin! Saturday, April 22nd, NationalAuctionGroup.com. Auction! Valley Head, 35 Acre Farm, Trophy Bass Lake, Lakefront Home, Guest Cabin. Saturday, April 22nd, NationalAuctionGroup.com. 888 888-465-1568. 888-465-1568. 888-465-1568. Four six five one five six eight. Are you in the market for a new or used vehicle? At Donahue Chevrolet, we have over 400 vehicles priced to move. Our new Chevrolets are employee price, plus you keep all the rebates. That means savings as high as $10,000. From the moment you walk in the door until you drive off in your new vehicle, we guarantee a sales process that puts your needs first. And don't forget, our on-site GM certified technicians are always here to ensure there are many worry-free miles in your vehicle's future. Come by Donahue Chevrolet and expect more from your local Chevy dealer. Hello, my name is Jeff Sayer with Dizzy Dean Fireworks in Rainsville, Alabama. I just wanted to take a second of your time to uh, thank Steve Black and all of the staff at WLW for helping us out this year with our fireworks season. Sales were up tremendously. We had a lot of customers coming in saying that they had saw the commercial and the advertisement on TV and on Facebook. And I just wanted to say thank you very much for all of your help and all of your support. Thank you. To find out just how affordable it is to have your business advertised on local television, give us a call. 256-996-5049. West Mullen Tire is two locations, Fort Payne and Alberville, or visit westmullentire.com. Dr. William Howard III and his staff are not only qualified and experienced in the field of sports medicine, they're also involved in the local communities. It's not uncommon to see Dr. Howler on the sidelines or in the bleachers watching the game and caring for its athletes. Whether in the Gadsden or Fort Payne office, Gadsden Orthopedics takes your health seriously. Using the latest in technology and treatments, they give their patients the best care possible. We
We listen, we care, and we heal at Gadsden Orthopedics in Fort Payne on Highway 35 across from Walmart and in Gadsden at 100 Medical Center Drive, Suite 101. Someday soon, as days pass, the hour draws near. Someday soon, this body of sin will be changed. Someday. Soon I'll be in heaven praising his name. Produced by WOLW Video. Living Water Video Productions.